All right, and we are back. I am sure that you are enjoying the music so far, courtesy of DJ Unique. Myself, I know that I'm having a blast. It is the same for you from wherever it is that you're watching us from. Now we get into our interview. And today I am joined by one lovely lady by the name Angela Washuka. And Angela is a co-founder. She is the co-founder of the here to talk to us about NBO Lit Festival. What's up? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to be here. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's start by talking about what the Book Bank is all about before Lit Fest. Mm -hmm. Book Bank is a social impact farm mm -hmm. that my co-founder and I put together in 2018. Mm -hmm. That's when we began our work. My co-founder is an author, a published author. Okay. Uh, she published a book that did really well in, in this market, in the Kenyan market, The Havoc of Choice. Mm. Her name is Wanjiro Koinange. And several years ago, we both of us have worked all our lives, mm. from working with musicians, and my particular background was working with authors and specifically publishing African authors mm -hmm. at an outfit called Kwani Trust, mm -hmm. which um, quite a huge portion of your audience may remember. We used to put on all sorts of shows, poetry, um, literary festivals, mm -hmm. all sorts of book reading, which we did, mm -hmm. and of course publishing of books. Mm -hmm. During that time when I was working there and when Jiro was working as the producer mm -hmm. of a festival that we were running called the Kwani Lit Fest, mm -hmm. We walked into the Macmillan Memorial Library. I don't know if you've been to that library ever, but it's... I have. You have, yeah. great. It's Nairobi's oldest. Mm -hmm. It was opened in 1931. And we walked to have what we're now having this year, the Literary Festival, mm -hmm. hosted in that building. Mm -hmm. Long story short, we found the building to be in uh, quite a dire state. Mm -hmm. And that's where our interest on the possibility of restoring public libraries mm -hmm. began. Mm -hmm. And that's how Book Bank was born. Okay. So now uh, with Book Bank, you are hosting the NBF, uh, NBO yes. Lead Fest. Yes. And this will be your third edition. Yes. So tell me about NBO Lead Fest. Because I feel, I, I love the idea of it. Like it's a, it's a festival, but inside... A library. Yes. Tell me about it. Three libraries, mm -hmm. thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, so NBO, NBO for Nairobi. Yeah. So we wanted to start a literary festival that was synonymous with the city, that we could name after the city, mm. hence the naming NBO Lit Fest. And of course, Lit is for literature and then festival. Mm. Um, so NBO Lit Fest is what I like to call our COVID baby. Uh, we started it in 2020 during lockdown. Mm -hmm. So the very first gathering that we had was actually virtual. All sorts of writers participating from across the world. But everything, as you can remember, was being done on screens. Yeah. So that was our very first edition. Mm -hmm. The second edition and our very first physical one was last year. Mm -hmm. We brought together about, I want to say maybe about 30 writers from across East Africa and the continent that in libraries and then this is our third edition mm -hmm. it's an expanded idea this year for the first time we have partnered with hay festival which is one of the oldest festivals in the world they have a 38 year history wow. of gathering writers from across the world mm -hmm. and so we've joined forces and we're very very excited because it means that we're able to attract through that partnership to us from all over the world mm. so our numbers are going higher uh, the libraries that we're using are getting more users um, the programs that we're offering have expanded um, we're offering a total of I think 30 sessions in total this year mm -hmm. and we're looking roughly at about 50 to 55 authors oh, in total amazing so I want you to paint that picture for us mm -hmm. how does it look like like festival look like just paint that picture for some some of those people who've never really um, heard of it have never gotten to witness it or experience it yeah just give us a picture of how that looks like what happens we like to play with the format and we like to insert a, as as much as possible what's happening in the creative sector mm -hmm. and that's why we call our festival a festival of ideas so the idea is that we have a sharing their fiction non-fiction 
poetry, all sorts of writing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. But we've also invited thought leaders who are talking about things like climate change, yeah. about identity, mm -hmm. um, about things that are happening in the world to do with wars, to do with um, just kind of general current affairs. Mm -hmm. But the way that it looks like is we start off with an opening reception partners um, from both Nairobi and beyond mm -hmm. on the on a Thursday evening mm -hmm. we kick off on a Thursday evening from the 27th of, of, of June till the 30th of June mm -hmm. the second day which is probably one of my favorite a Friday is exclusively a children's day mm -hmm. so we are going to be at Kaloleni library uh, which is the first library in okay. 2020 yeah uh, we've restored this into a beautiful library catering to children mm. so we're taking all our children activities there mm -hmm. we're going to have everything from storytelling sessions by a very popular storyteller from kaloleni called opa agunda mm. we're going to be um, carrying out film screenings all sorts of play activities for children we're going to have an activity called africa story to have what we're calling kiddie master classes mm -hmm. for kids to learn how to express themselves or just provide that space um, for creativity for children mm -hmm. when we wrap up friday we wrap it up with a big concert for the kids and then on saturday we are at eastlands library mm -hmm. which is in makadara same compound as the mm -hmm. so saturday and sunday we're there and those two days we have a mix of master classes panel co conversations, um, readings, concerts, all sorts of discussions. Mm. So it's panel after panel, discussion after discussion, performance. In that you're also free to browse the collections that we've added to these libraries. We've added 19,000 new books, very contemporary and fresh. Wow. Um, and the idea is that you can walk into a public library that's been restored with very young people in mind mm. and that's resourced, that has Wi-Fi. It's a really great place for new ideas to come and listen to some of the people that you read, mm -hmm. um, but also to really enjoy a spruced up space. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of involving children, you know, I love it. So what exactly inspired that, you know, um, having to not just deal with the adults but also involving kids in this particular festival mm. I, I think that we often in general for children the need for exposure to creativity mm. and how that impacts everything from improving literacy levels to just making them generally um, interested in a world that's beyond everything that we experience every day mm -hmm. so children have been a fundamental part of how we program and some of the programs that we run the NBO Lit Fest, mm -hmm. centre children. Um, we have opportunities for kids to come in during school holidays and they can partake in activities from homework clubs where they get help with their homework mm -hmm. to something that we call play bank, which is where we encourage you to step away from your books mm -hmm. and we provide other games. You can play Ludo, Kenya at 50, Kati if that's what you're into. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that creativity and critical thought development also comes from things outside of just studying books all the time. Um, so we like to work with kids in a myriad of ways. We mm -hmm. encourage them to play, we encourage them to express themselves, but we also provide um, an access to information that is necessary for them to develop an interest in the creative sector. Mm -hmm. um, I think you would have remembered that one of the greatest losses that we've had in our national curriculum is, is the removal. Of, of creativity. It's mm. slowly making its way back, yeah, but, but for public life, it's useful to step into that gap mm -hmm. so that kids can also come to the library and learn things like play a musical instrument, come and take voice lessons, mm -hmm. um, and do some visual art if that's what you're into. If you want to do some drawing, you can do that. Mm. Um, so we really think of public libraries as spaces where you can provide all of these channels mm -hmm. and all these ways for both children and themselves. Yeah. What gave you that push to work on or to put your, your efforts in, in trying to refurbish some of these libraries? What, what pushed you to that point? Well, you know, like I said, my co-founder and I have worked in, in this sector for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously you're a member of this sector. Mm -hmm. It's not a sector that's been treated as uh, well as it could have. The potential for the creative industries, I think,
to provide gateways for employment, mm -hmm. but also just an avenue for people to express themselves served in this country. Mm -hmm. um, creativity, the creative sector in general pro, like, you know, contributes, I want to say, approximately 5% to our GDP. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got to think about spaces where people can go to that they don't necessarily, that are not driven or not determined by mm -hmm. and public libraries really, really provide critical infrastructure for people to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that they're important and we as Bookbank think that public libraries is like Crucial, crucial social infrastructure. All right, I'll cut you short on that. We take a break and then we come back and continue with the conversation. Sure. Let's take a break. Thank you. And we are back. Thank you for staying with us. In case you're just tuning in, this is Good Morning Kenya Entertainment Thursday. And I'm joined by Angela Washuka. Angela is here to talk to us about the NBO Lead Festival that's new to you rather lit festival stands for literature festival for people who love books yeah so angela you were just, you got the push or the urge to come forth and start refurbishing some of these libraries that have been there mm. for for years mm. yeah um so like i explained when we walked into the macmillan memorial library mm -hmm. on banda street which is nairobi's oldest library mm -hmm. and found it we really started to ask ourselves questions about um, that were also informed by our background. Like I said, I'd been working in publishing, mm. and by then it had been at least seven years of publishing um, very exciting Kenyan and other voices. And the question at that point for me became, where does that work sit, right? Mm -hmm. And public libraries, all the condition of the physical building of public libraries looks like this. Mm. Um, where does this work sit? Where do people get to access this information um, in a way that's not driven by their socioeconomic status even, right? Mm -hmm. Because public libraries have had a long history of providing access to information and experiences and just for a nominal fee. Yeah. Um, so when Jura and I were then inspired by a piece that she wrote digging into the history of that building, mm -hmm. um, it's a very unique building, the Macmillan. Mm -hmm. It's the only building in Kenya that's protected by its own specific act of parliament. And it's a law from the 1930s. Mm. And so when the person that it's named after, Macmillan, died, his wife honor mm -hmm. and then it was bequeathed to the residents of Nairobi under the care of what is now the Nairobi City County mm. so when we started to look at the network of libraries not just the Macmillan but other public libraries we found that sadly the condition was the same mm -hmm. throughout and that's what really informed our curiosity which led us down a hole of trying to figure out if you were trying to do a sort of public-led process of restoring public libraries, who do you talk to? What forms do you sign? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. what is the process? Mm -hmm. It took us a couple of years to figure all of that out, mm -hmm. but eventually we did manage to get into a partnership with the county, mm -hmm. uh, city county of Nairobi, and since then, with the community in Kaluleni, including um, having them be the contractors and the laborers for fixing this building. We fixed Kaloleni Library, and then we moved on pretty quickly to Eastlands Library, which is in Makadara. Mm -hmm. And then now our next project is the Macmillan Memorial Library. Mm -hmm. Some people say that um, Kenyans don't have that urge to read books or the history of reading books. What do you feel about that? We feel like... Um, some say that nowadays most people don't really read books as much. You know, some would opt to listen to um, what's the name of this? Audio books. Yeah, audio books. Yeah. yeah. Some opt. Some would opt to just listen and read books. Do you feel like we still have that culture of reading as a people of this nation? I do. I do feel like we have a strong reading culture, mm -hmm. and in fact, the the idea that Kenyans don't read, I'm not even sure that is something based on data mm. or fact. Mm. Uh, when we look at the data, it tells us otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, there, was, there was an author from, from South Sudan called Taban Lo Leong, mm -hmm. who talked about this idea of East Africa being a literary desert, which is actually where this idea that Kenyans don't read come from. Mm. Um, but I'm personally, um, 
as someone who's worked in publishing, don't mind if people want to absorb information in different ways. Listen to it, and that's what rocks your boat, well and good. Mm -hmm. If you want to read the pages of a book, that's well and good. Mm -hmm. For me, it doesn't really matter how you absorb the information. It's that there's absorption of the information happening. Mm -hmm. And again, looking back at the data, the three libraries that I've referenced, since we started work on these libraries, we've had a, a, a rise, um, a sharp increase. 3% more usage than we did at the beginning. Mm -hmm. 60,000 people walked in through the doors last year. 24,000 people took part in some of the programs that I'm telling you about, including mm -hmm. that festival that we referenced from last year. Mm -hmm. So the data is telling us otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge for producers of any sort of content, books included, is to where to go where the um, as opposed to seeing all these different channels and ways of absorbing information as a threat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with Litfest, what, what exactly are you hoping to get out of it, you know, in the long run? What's your goal with Litfest? Uh, we have big goals. Um, central to our goal, obviously, staying this literary festival in public libraries is informed by our desire to make public libraries basically popping, mm. to make them the place that people want to come to, to use Wi-Fi, to um, have access to information and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So more foot traffic coming into public libraries, using the resources in public libraries, is always a joy, a source of joy for us. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the more that people use the facilities that are now available. I know you have a band from Juja coming on just now to talk yeah. about <laughs> their new album. Yeah. We provide opportunities um, for creative expression like that. Yeah. If you want to put on a concert um, at Island's library, there's a stage for you to mm. do that. End of every holiday program. Mm -hmm. So more people using public libraries. I think public libraries also continuing to be resourced and to be supported as centers that give equal access to everyone. Um, that's super important. And I think in a country like ours where you have inequality, and a city like Nairobi where you see so much new construction going on, mm -hmm. but a very shrinking public space mm -hmm. and less and less allocation of social infrastructure than the existing infrastructure that we have from social halls to public libraries, which is ours, Mm -hmm. and we need to use these spaces mm -hmm. and to make them the kind of spaces that encourage critical thinking, um, that encourage people to have access to new ideas and new experiences, um, to creative expression, because ultimately there are civic spaces mm -hmm. um, and we have to utilize them and we choose to use them in these ways. Absolutely, and that's, that's a, such a good way to utilize um, this is your third edition, as I had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that the first edition was strictly online because yeah. of COVID-19, yes. right? Then you had the second one in 2023. 2020, that's last year, yes. right? And then now this is the third one. So how different will this be from, uh, not us from the first one, because obviously the first one was on. How different will it be from last year's event? Um, we're super, super excited to actually be able to grow our footprint, if you like. Mm. So for this edition, um, last year we focused a lot more on authors that were regional and also continental. We've been able to go way beyond that. We have writers participating from Brazil, from the UK, mm. from the US, from Nigeria, from Libya, from Palestine. Um, we have so many authors participating from so many different places and we're so excited also that this festival has attracted the participation of some of the best writers producing work. Nadine Evaristo is a Booker Prize winner. Mm -hmm. David Olushoga is a prize winner. Mm -hmm. Aminata Fona is a prize winner. Mm -hmm. Taya Selassie is a prize winner. And closer to home, we're really, really excited also to be able to bring some of the conversations that have been happening online mm -hmm. to happen in these spaces. So I don't know if you know uh, Justin Wanda, for example. Mm -hmm. She'll be participating in the programming. A star who does clear the airwaves yeah. is going to talk to us um, quite a bit about his process. We're going to be having discussions about emerging technologies, for instance, what's the effect that AI is having mm -hmm. on creative expression in mm -hmm. general. Um, so more expanded programming.
people. Um, and the curation just means that we're able also to tie things that are happening in our world that are also happening in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. There's a conversation that we'll be having with an award-winning author called Amitav Ghosh, who's talking about the climate crisis, but also new ways of looking at the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. And he'll be joined by um, a young author Muthoni, um, who's 15 years old wow. and is writing about climate change. Mm -hmm. um, so very exciting programming and I can guarantee that there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. There will be something for there everyone. There will be something for everyone. Yeah. I love the fact that we, you know, the participants are coming from all over, you know, mm -hmm. from all over the to, uh, to us, like just how important is that for you know, for our local authors as well, you know, to get to network mm -hmm. and for also the ones who are coming from outside to also to get to network, you know, just how beautiful is that and just how important is that for authors to yeah. come together and get to network, yeah. you know, getting ideas from people from all over, you know, from a different continent from you. Yeah. Just how, how important is that it's for super, a writer? It's super, super. Um, because I think we know that one of the fundamentals of good writing is that you have to read. Mm -hmm. And reading as widely as possible um, gives you a more informed worldview. It wasn't until I myself went to Latin America for the first time. Mm -hmm. I was, Hang on, the things that are happening here are very similar to what's happening in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And the distance through exposure to their cre creativity just becomes shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. um, one of the bedrocks of the experiences that we offer for both writers as well as people who want, who aspire to be writers, is master classes. So it is very important that people are coming and participating mm -hmm. um, in. So Bernadine Evaristo, who, as I said, is an award-winning author, mm -hmm. is going to be um, teaching a masterclass on writing fiction. Mm -hmm. We have a writer from South Africa teaching another masterclass on young adult fiction. We have a group from BBC Africa teaching a masterclass on and on investigative journalism mm -hmm. and how to keep, um, you know, a kind of independent voice when you're reporting. Um, so it's not just a place to come and interact with authors. As an aspiring author, it's also a place to come and pick up skills. Lola Shonein, who is one of my favorite people in the world, she's a writer from Nigeria. She runs a festival in Lagos called the AK coming in as well. And last year, one of the most popular things that we offered was by her, mm -hmm. which was a masterclass. And it was taught to people who want to build what we were calling literary empires. So if you want to be a publisher who's also working in a library, but then who's also writing your own work, who's also running a bookstore, is that there are templates for these possibilities in the creative sector. Mm -hmm. And we're really in the business of making those possibilities visible to anyone that wants to access mm -hmm. them. Amazing. Now I want you to um, look at your camera, speak to the person who's watching us right now and let them know who is open to come through for this festival and where it's happening. Super. All right. Your camera? This. This camera? Yeah. Karibuni to NBO Lit Fest. My name is Angela Washuka. NBO Lit Fest is a festival of ideas that is anchored in Nairobi's public libraries. We will be at Macmillan Memorial Library in Eastlands Library from the 27th to the 30th of June. NBOLitFest.com is where you can find all the details, lots and lots and lots of free events. Only registration is required. And the events that we're charging for, which are a small fraction, a 300 shillings a pop. Karibu mm -hmm. sana. Awesome. Thank you. And I hope that you get to um, do more of them, you know, Thank so that you. we can continue being a nation that is informed. Yes. Because through reading, you get to be informed. Absolutely. All right, this is where we put a cup to this particular interview. But don't you go too far. When I come back, I'll be coming back with the sounds of Juja. You want to find out who they are? Stay tuned. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs>